Good morning, everybody. Patty Ann here. Hang on just a second. Okay, Judy had written to me this morning and wanted to know about doing a specific project that is shown in Cricut Access. And I'll show you that in just a moment up in Cricut Design Space. But first, I wanted to show you what I'm going to try to use to do this project. <coughs> Excuse me. I bought this the deep cut blade years ago. I've never used it yet, never even had it out of the package yet. I'm going to get it out of the package to try this project today. It's an experiment and I'm going to use this clip chipboard. It's pretty heavy as you can see and I'm going to see how well I can cut this. <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do of course is I'm just going to make a test cut. So if you follow up me follow me up here to Cricut Design Space. I'll show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> this is the project <clears throat> that, excuse me, that Judy wanted to make. And um, well, let me go to customize it now. Oh, by the way, let's look here first. It says that it's designed for the Cricut Maker. And because it uses basswood, I'm but I'm going to try it with this heavy chipboard to see how it turns out. So let's go to customize. <clears throat> and this is what it looks like. The uh, text, isn't that pretty? But what I'm going to do before I make this is I'm going to do the test cut that I've shown you how I do in the past. So I'm going to come here to shapes and I'm going to get a uh, diamond, I guess. <clears throat> and Maybe I should get a diamond and a circle to see how well it does rounded shapes. Aha, uh -huh. I just thought of something. If I just get a heart, it'll do both shapes. <laughs> I'm going to come to shapes and get the heart. And I'm going to make it small and put it up here in the upper left hand corner. And I'm going to change its color to white because I believe that Cricut Design um, Space or our Cricut machines usually cut the white things first. So now I'm going to go to make it. Okay, yes, it is going to cut the white one first and then pop out. So <clears throat> I'm going to bring you back down to my mat. And from what I've been seeing on the internet, some people say that we should uh, tape these things down. I have a really sticky mat, pretty much new mat, and I'm going to put this on here. Okay, it's too big that way, but it'll fit this way. Okay, and what I've seen people suggest you do, and even these directions suggest it from, um, for the maker, is you to take some masking tape. and you tape it down to hold it in place even better. Because even though you have the sticky mat, it may not hold perfectly. This edge is kind of messed up a little bit. I hope that doesn't um, interfere with how well the cut goes. <laughs> okay, I have my machine turned on over there. And if I click on continue, finish taping first. I don't know if I need to do the top or not. I should refer to the directions again, <coughs> but I'll do it just in case. Okay, there's the top. All right, so everything's well taped down and now I'm ready to put it into my machine but look up here at my machine again or my uh, Cricut Design Space and so I went here continue you know select your machine now the problem is <clears throat> I didn't see any setting for heavy chipboard nor did I see a setting that actually uses the deep cut blade 
So what I'm going to try first of all for my first test is just coming to Artboard and then to uh, this one, the light, the 0.55 millimeter one. So I'm going to say Done. And notice here it says to use the fine point blade, but instead I'm going to use the heavy point blade. So I'm going to put that into my machine and I'll show you at the end how you go about putting the housing and the heavy point blade into your machine. Okay, I did a lot of experimenting as you can see up here. And I did another one here. The last one that I did, the settings that I used was, well, I used um, craft board, I used the default pressure, and I did have my deep uh, point blade in. However, I guess years ago when I bought this housing unit, and like I said, I've never used it before, it doesn't fit in my Explore Air 2. So what I did was I just put the deep blade into my other housing unit and tried that to see how it would work. So that's how I've cut this. So let's see what we've got here. I have no idea. This is an experiment. Okay, A, I've already discovered people say to use masking tape on your mat. Be careful when you pull it up that you don't pull it up too quickly or it takes off some of your mat. I wonder if painter's tape would be a little better to use, but looks like if I don't rip it off, I don't have that issue. So if I pull it slowly, it doesn't pull up the mat. All right, let's see what we got. This is really stuck to my mat. Let's see if this is going to come out. Nope, not all the way. It's not cut through all the way. Bummer. So I went around this twice and I used the heavy blade, but I don't know if that would make a difference. Now, why did it cut up here for my sample though? What did I have different? See, it's not all the way through. Imagine if I go like this, I could get it, but it, see how it's leaving part? Okay, that's just a bummer. So, back to the cutting board. <laughs> because I'm bummed, this didn't work. I thought it was going to. Looks good. But, you see how it's not bringing the whole thing up with it? Didn't cut all the way through. So, start again. So unfortunately, I think I've run out of this cardboard. So I'm going, what I'm going to use now is, this is a cardstock sampler that I bought. And the backing cardboard is okay. It's a pretty good weight. Not as heavy as that last one. So now, let's see. Got to clean off my mat. Okay, so I have my mat ready, cleaned off. So a few little spots. And this time I'm going to try this cardstock. So I said it came from, or not cardstock, this came from the backing of this package of cardstock sampler that I bought from Cricut. So it's just the backing cardboard that I'm going to use. It's not as heavy as that other stuff, so unfortunately my experiment's not going to be very good because I'm changing too many variables. 
if you remember the scientific method from when you were a kid. So I'm going to put this on and I guess I will use some tape again. And I still have the blade for the deep cut into my little, my regular cut housing. Because as I said, this wouldn't fit in my Cricut. So let's go back up to Cricut Design Space. And I guess I will let it run another uh, um, test. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to Browse All Materials. This time I'm going to go to Light Chipboard. Done. And I'm going to come over here where it says Edit Tools. Since I still have that blade in there, I have the deep point blade in, I'm going to check on that. And I don't know if I'm messing things up by doing this. We'll see. I'll leave it on default pressure and my machine's ready. It's going to cut the little heart up in the upper left hand corner and let's see how that does. So let me put this in my machine here. Bend this. Okay, that comes out perfectly just like that. So I'm going to leave all those settings the same way that they are and start typing out or doing the other. So up here I'm going to go to Browse All Materials and go to Light Chipboard and say Done. And remember I edited the tools and I don't know if this makes a difference but I'm putting the deep point blade one in again just so that I'm following the exact same things in this experiment. And now it's ready to go so I'm going to come over here and cut it load it into my machine and cut it and this will take a little bit of time because it will do a double cut so I will be back when it's done and let's check it out and see how it worked okay as you can maybe see I've been doing a lot of experimenting using the deep cut blade and the uh, regular fine tip blade to see what I can come up with up here with these little sample hearts the last one that I tried to use on this when I did the I Love Us was I used less pressure and I used the light chipboard 0.55 and I used the fine tip blade. And the only other thing I did was I did it twice. So actually when it says to um, eject or you know make the mat come back out. I just hit this C again for Cricut and had it go around again. So I have no idea how this turned out. As you can probably see, it is sort of blobbery looking. So I'm not sure how that's going to do. I'll turn this over. And I really don't want to lose my hearts, my samples in there. So maybe I'll do it this way. Okay, so far this is looking pretty good. It's not perfect. I can hear some tearing going on right over here. So I might need to fix some parts. But overall, it looks like it's doing pretty well. So like I said, I had it set on less pressure because I thought it would make less little blobbery things. But I do have a few spots that I have to clean up like that. And in here but it's not bad okay let me get rid of that so I can fix this now where is my tool here it is no it's not <laughs> here it is Okay, so what I've discovered by all of my testing was this one worked pretty well. It's not perfect, but it looks pretty good and it would definitely be usable. Let's see if I can get the word love off of here now. Carefully. So let me just start out with this one. Now, I brought a piece of uh, some glad press and seal over just because that's what I have down here. 
and I'm going to see what happens when I try to paint it. So I'll just take the word us and I'm going to use some of this. It's just a acrylic paint from Hobby Lobby or somewhere and use one of these little foam brushes and see how this turns out. So just start painting it. Probably dabbing is the best thing to do so you don't risk tearing it. So people that like to make cake toppers, this would probably be an easy way to do it. Of course, I don't imagine you'd ever want to get any of this paint on the cake because I'm sure it's not non-toxic, although I didn't read on the label to see so that you can see it. So it turned out pretty cute. It's usable. It's a little bit jaggedy around the edges, just a tiny bit, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if that would be changed if I used a newer blade. It's okay. I'm not thrilled with it, but it's okay. Okay, as you can probably see, I've got quite a mess down here on my desk. Hopefully you can see all the mess. So what this mess is all about is all of the trial and error I have been going through trying to get this to work. So I cut it out like this and then look at those where I cut them out and I labeled which blade I used and um, you know how I had my machine set up. So I've been doing a lot of testing. Well, as I was running out of materials, now some of these turned out okay and I painted this one, but you can see there's some rough edges to it and I'm not crazy about that. I could probably go back and cut those off but this was just cardboard that I had. It wasn't the good car, uh, chipboard that I believe Cricut sells, although I've never purchased it yet, but I'm going to get some. Then I tried, I just used the back of the parchment paper, the cheap buck chart parchment paper I get at the Dollar Tree, and I tried cutting it out of that, and actually it turned out really well. Let me show you how fine it was able to cut and nicely. I mean, that's pretty cute, pretty good. Really fine cardboard there. And so it's, you know, this thick. It's, so you could probably use a cereal box. But this seemed to work better than the regular cardboard that I was using. Because the cardboard, you know, comes apart in little pieces like. Whereas this is more pressed together. So then, throw that down on the floor. The next thing I tried that I really loved using was I had a package of this Heidi Swap paper that I had gotten from Tuesday morning. So I ripped the back cover off of that to use it. And that's what I have on my mat right now. And I just cut, oops, let me fix this. Okay, I just cut this out of it right up here. Move my computer back a little bit. And it works perfectly, you guys, perfectly. So let's see what I had my machine. If you come up here to Cricut Design Space, you can see I had my machine set on light chipboard, the 0.5 one. I had the default pressure and just the regular fine tip blade. So come back down here. And this is what Judy had wanted to make. Now obviously this is just a frame with nobody's picture that I know, but she wanted to be able to make a little thing that she could put on here. Now this is just one layer. I think it turns out really nice. I could do two layers if I wanted to and glue them together. But I think this actually turned out pretty cute, just like that. So this would be an easy project to make. Uh, the font that I used here was that Rabitha that comes in the bundle for February. But any font that you have from Defont that you like, that you can weld it together, would work out nicely. So again, if you want to use the backing and be frugal of some of your paper packs, 
do that little test like I showed in the beginning. Here you can see up here there's a little star. I actually tried to star that time to see how it would work. Um, do the test, see how it works on your material, and then go ahead and cut it. Uh, and again, if you're being frugal, this is the backing of a cart, a pack of card stock or paper, actually, that I got at Tuesday morning. It's just 48 papers, 12 by 12. It was $6.99. And not only can I use the papers in here, but I could use the backing as well. And the front cover is just the same, I'm sure. So if I wanted to use the front cover, I could, and I could do the second one, mirror it, and then glue the two of them together if I didn't want this stuff to show. So I hope that you give this a try. Uh, remember to the settings that I used for this backing from the cards or the paper is custom material set to light chipboard and I tried the uh, default pressure and the regular um, fine tip blade and it turned out really nicely. Um, I was happy with it. So if you use this material, go with my testing because as I said, I have tested a lot of stuff to see what works <laughs> and what doesn't. I've been having a good old time doing all this. It's all over the place here. Uh, just testing, testing, and checking to see what will work. And there's more of it under here, but I guess you get the idea. So thank you for joining me. If you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up and hit the little bell so you get notified when I have a new video posted. And make sure you comment and ask questions and join us in the Facebook group. If you're not sure where our group is, look down below at the links. I have a lot of links down there, including the Facebook group. So again, thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.